So uh, once again, uh, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, really happy, even in a in this uh, strange situation, to be connected with you today. Uh, and thanks uh, to all of you to promote uh, this uh, being Italy at home. And uh, so, as you know, uh, our idea was uh, at the Vin Italy to, to present uh, all the new vintages of Castellare and, uh, and the Monastero. So starting with uh, the Chianti Classico 2018, uh, the Reserva Pugiale 2017, uh, and uh, Isodi uh, 16, uh, and uh, Coniale 16, uh, Poggio Merli 18, and Vinsanto 14, and for Podere Monastero both uh, 2018. So as you know, just a, a little introduction is uh, Castellare uh, since the beginning uh, is following two very important uh, philosophies of uh, production. The first is the organic philosophy, no pesticide and herbicide are used on the property. And uh, the symbol is uh, the bird and the label. And the second important philosophy is the total respect for uh, tradition. So no blend between uh, indigenous and uh, international uh, uh, grape varieties uh, in, in, our, in our wine. And the Castellare Chianti Classico, it's really one of the few Chianti Classico still made without uh, any international uh, grape. And as you know, uh, with uh, the 2017, our Chianti Classico was included in the top 100 wines of the world by Wine Spectator at the number 17. It was a great, great, great award and uh, uh, bringing uh, the name of uh, Castellare all over the world and uh, with a lot of appreciation uh, from, uh, from the, entire, the entire globe for, uh, for this wine. And uh, once again, uh, thanks very much to all of you for the incredible job you did uh, in all over, so in, the, in uh, more than 40 years, but especially in uh, 2019 uh, that was uh, an incredible, an incredible year of sales for United States. So thanks to all of you for the fantastic job uh, you did. And I really hope uh, to have the occasion uh, soon uh, to come back on the market and uh, to work uh, on the streets with all of you and uh, to continue to promote uh, uh, Castellare and the uh, Poderio Monastero wines uh, in the United States. Uh, just a uh, uh, a little uh, introduction about uh, the new vintage, 2018. Uh, 2018 was uh, a very uh, fresh vintage, so it's uh, completely different uh, than uh, 2017, but also very, very good, especially in the, in the sense of uh, the finesse, the elegance. 2018 was uh, a, a, great, uh, a great vintage, and the uh, production of uh, Chianti 2018 uh, was uh, almost uh, the same of 2017, even a little bit, a little bit higher in terms of uh, production. So we are uh, uh, with 2018. We produced uh, uh, 130,000 uh, uh, bottles uh, in uh, in this vintage. As usual, is made with 95% uh, Sangiovese and 5% is uh, Canaiolo. Uh, six months uh, in uh, French oak, second time French oak, and uh, eight more months in the bottle before uh, before to release. The wine is really really approachable. Is a, is a beautiful freshness and a great, great balance. So, and the day by day, this wine is, uh, it became a better and better in the sense of uh, the drinkability. And uh, is perfectly uh, recognizable, the terroir, also in, in this vintage, a lot of notes of rosemary and a lot of uh, uh, typical herbs of, uh, of, Chianti, of Chianti area and a little, a little touch of oak. So the notes of vanilla are very, are very balanced. And, uh, and the wine, again, one more time, is really, really uh, enjoyable. And uh, the second wine is uh, Il Poggiale. Poggiale 2017. 2017, as you know, uh, was one of the most uh, dried uh, 
season in, in Tuscany, but uh, uh, the and the Chianti Classico 2017 was the explanation. In Castellare, we, we had a, a very, uh, and we still have every single vintage, uh, a particular microclimb, because uh, the cellar is located in the, in the middle of this beautiful valley. And uh, we have in front uh, the Valdelsa, so uh, helping with a beautiful breeze uh, and uh, helping to reduce the temperature at night and making a good excursion of temperature between uh, uh, night and day. So for this reason, also in a very dry seasons like 2017, we can make wine with a good acidity, good freshness, uh, and a fantastic balance. And uh, Il Poggiale 2017, for my personal opinion, it's one of the best vintages uh, ever made for this wine, uh, for balance, for body, for concentration, for uh, and also for the drinkability. So the wine is, uh, it's really, it's really uh, approachable, but uh, at the same time, you can recognize uh, uh, the, the texture uh, and uh, the body of uh, this, uh, in, this, uh, beautiful, in this beautiful wine. And the production of 2017 Il Poggiale is a little bit lower than, uh, than normal. So we produced uh, 9,000 bottles, but uh, Again, as for my personal opinion, I hope you, you will have uh, soon uh, the opportunity to taste uh, this wine because it's really uh, one of the best uh, vintages for, uh, for this wine. As uh, the, big boy, the big boy of the cellar is Sodio di San Nicolò. In, um, in, again, is personal opinion, uh, 2016, uh, is, uh, is the best vintage uh, since my beginning. For sure, from 1995, 2016 uh, is, uh, is the best vintage uh, made for this wine. And uh, since uh, the first uh, hours of uh, fermentation, I recognize uh, the beauty of this wine because the flavor profile is really, really amazing. And uh, it's an incredible balance uh, a uh, wonderful body, but uh, also with a fantastic uh, uh, freshness, making the wine in a, in a beautiful elegance. And uh, uh, since the beginning, same, same grape variety. So it's an 85% Sangioveto, 15% uh, Malvasia Nera. The only thing we, I did a little bit uh, different in this vintage, uh, I keep a little bit longer in uh, uh, skin contact. So I did uh, a little bit longer maceration than, uh, than normal. So I keep in maceration the, the San Giovetto because of course we do the fermentation in two uh, separate moments because, uh, because the, uh, the harvest of San Giovese is normally uh, one week before the Malvasia Nera. Malvasia Nera is absolutely the last in, uh, in Castellare. And uh, I keep the Sangiovese for uh, five and a half weeks uh, in, uh, in skin contact. That is uh, uh, the only thing I did a little bit uh, different comparing uh, with the other vintages, only because uh, since the beginning, I recognize uh, a great material, so a great, uh, a beautiful grape. Uh, and uh, for this reason, I decided to keep a little bit longer in, uh, in skin contact. And then, uh, as usual, two years in, uh, in a French oak, 50% new, 50% uh, second time, and one more year in bottle before uh, to release. The wine is bottled uh, in the beginning of this year, and uh, the wine is uh, it's already available. I saw uh, the, first, uh, the first cases uh, uh, requested to ship uh, from Conte Deposito just a few days ago. And uh, so I really hope that you can uh, get in the market uh, soon uh, this uh, beautiful, and again, for my personal opinion, this is the best uh, since my beginning. And the uh, production is uh, always in the, same, uh, in the same level of quantity. So it's about uh, 30,000 uh, 30, uh, bottles. And, uh, and uh, what, what else? And, uh, and so it's, uh, that is uh, the all, all things about, uh, about this audit. And now 
is uh, Coniale. Coniale is uh, also 2016. Coniale is 100% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. And uh, 2016, uh, in general, was uh, a fantastic, uh, a fantastic uh, vintage. And uh, Coniale, uh, as usual, uh, is uh, is one of the last, uh, not the the the, last, the the latest, but is one of the last uh, uh, vineyard uh, in terms of harvest. Uh, we we did in 2016 uh, in the third week of September. And. Uh, and we did uh, a fermentation uh, as usual in uh, concrete for um, keeping uh, in skin contact uh, for five weeks uh, and then two years in 70% new, 30% uh, second time French oak. And then uh, one more year in bottle before, uh, before to release. Uh, as usual, the production is uh, it's very limited. It's a little bit uh, lower than uh, 3,000 bottles for vintage. And uh, I really hope that uh, we can uh, uh, ship to United States a few cases of this wine because uh, it's really uh, a fantastic expression of uh, Cabernet uh, Sauvignon from uh, the Chianti Classico area with a, a, beautiful, uh, a beautiful note of uh, the Chianti Classico terroir, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's an, amazing, uh, an amazing power and uh, very beautiful balance. And uh, now, the last thread of, uh, of uh, Castellare is uh, Poggio e Merli. Poggio e Merli 2018. This is uh, a little, uh, a little uh, uh, strange uh, uh, version of uh, Poggio e Merli because normally the Poggio e Merli is, uh, is, in the, is connected with, uh, with the power, with uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of power, but uh, 2018 uh, is also a fantastic, a fantastic freshness. So this is uh, again uh, uh, a very beautiful, a very beautiful expression of a Merlot from uh, from Chianti Classico, with a lot of notes uh, of uh, reminding the the terroir of uh, of our uh, of Chianti Classico. And uh, the wine is, uh, is made with an, a very high uh, concentration, especially in 2018. Production was uh, very limited. We did uh, only one uh, cloisters, uh, uh, average one cloisters per vine in order to, to bring uh, uh, the, 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 highest, uh, the highest power in the wine uh, in, in, that, uh, in that kind of vintage. And then we did... Uh, uh, four weeks in uh, skin uh, in uh, skin contact um, uh, after the alcoholic fermentation in stainless steel, and then uh, we did uh, one point one year and a half in uh, in French oak. And uh, usually uh, we do 100% new French oak, but in 2018 with Il, Il Poggio e Merli we decided to use only 80% uh, of new oak and 20%. Uh, of uh, uh, second time, just in order to reduce uh, the touch, uh, the touch of oak, and to give more uh, space to the uh, to the flavor to the flavor profile of uh, of the grape. A lot of uh, beautiful uh, blackberry notes, and uh, it's a it's it's a very very beautiful expression of uh, of Merlot from uh, from Chianti Classico area. And uh, production, uh, again, is uh, very limited. It's a little bit lower than uh, 3,000 bottles for this vintage. And uh, now, the end of uh, Castellare is uh, the Vincanto, Vincanto 2014. Uh, as you know, the production of Vincanto is almost uh, exclusively made uh, for, uh, for Weinbo, in the sense that uh, uh, we produce uh, only uh, 1,300 bottles, uh, 375, and the 1,200 bottles we ship to to Weinbo. So it's 99% uh, of the production is uh, is exported in uh, in United States. And uh, as usual, the Vincanto is made with 60% uh, Malvasia, 40% Rubiano. We dry the grapes for five months. Uh, in the Vincentaia, after five months, we press the grapes and uh, we leave the juice uh, 
in a small uh, in a small uh, uh, barrels called the Caratello is between 80 and 100 liters and we keep for five years and uh, after five years just a light uh, paper filtration and uh, the wine is ready to drink. Uh, as you know uh, one of the secrets uh, of uh, the beauty of Insanto is uh, the mother. The mother is uh, the part of East uh, that every single vintage uh, remain in the in the barrel and uh, for this reason uh, in a bottle like this so we can say that uh, the 90% is 2014 about 10% is the mix of uh, 30 35 different vintages so that is uh, the magic uh, of uh, of uh, Vincanto and uh, the wine is always uh, beautifully balanced between uh, sweet and dry never is too sweet and uh, is a perfect uh, is a perfect wine uh, not only for dessert but also for uh, some uh, special kind of cheese uh, and my favorite combination for example is the blue cheese with uh, with vinsanto uh, and uh, and especially vinsanto in uh, in in this made in this style because it has a beautiful beautiful acidity uh, bringing a good balance with uh, the sugar content that is always uh, between uh, 90 and 100 grams per, uh, per liter. Uh, now I'm uh, again extremely, extremely happy and honored to present uh, uh, my little two babies as uh, La Pineta and uh, Campanaio, made from my own uh, project uh, Podere, Podere Monastero. Uh, Monastero as you know, it's, uh, it's my little project uh, very close to Castellare. It's only four kilometers from Castellare, but in the a, in a highest uh, uh, site of Castellina and Chianti. So it's about 550 meters elevation. And uh, the reason of, of this project was uh, connected and is still connected with uh, Pino Nero because uh, since my uh, beginning in my career, I had uh, in my mind, uh, the idea, the dream uh, to produce one day my own Pinot Noir, one of the best grape uh, in the world. And uh, I found in my property uh, the perfect condition uh, uh, to produce uh, a, great, uh, a great Pinot Noir. Uh, the wine is 100% uh, biodynamic, no pesticide, no herbicide, everything is made by hand in the cellar and of course in the vineyard and uh, we only spray uh, sulfur and copper and we try to maximize the idea of a biodynamic concept and uh, we do a, a small production we have only three hectares only three hectares of, uh, of vineyard 1.5 Pinot Nero and 1.5 uh, uh, between uh, Cabernet and Merlot and we produce the second wine that is uh, Campanaio and uh, La Pineta is uh, entirely fermented in uh, French oak. And, uh, and then after the fermentation, we move in a small uh, uh, French oak barrel in Barrique, where we keep uh, for um, uh, one year, is 50% uh, of the barrels are new and 50% are the second time, 100% uh, French oak from Allier medium toast. And uh, now we have a 2018, uh, for my personal opinion, 2018 is uh, the best vintage of La Pineta since the beginning, and especially thanks to the to the weather, with a with a, uh, is a fresh uh, was a fresh season, and uh, that is a perfect uh, perfect season for uh, for Pinot Nero. Uh, as you as you know, this wine uh, since the beginning uh, uh, was uh, recognized uh, from uh, all the uh, national and international wine writers. One of the best expression of uh, Pinot Nero from, uh, from Italy. And in 2016, uh, we got uh, the best Italian Pinot Noir repeated in 2017, and I really hope uh, uh, to keep again in, uh, in 2018. So the small production is uh, 4,000 bottles uh, every vintage, and I'm really happy and honored that uh, a significant quantity is, uh, is imported uh, by Weimar. So for also for this reason, once again, uh, thanks, thanks very much to all of you for uh, the fantastic uh, help you give me and uh, every single vintage uh, to promote uh, part of my blood. So thank you so much for, for all of you.
and uh, just a few more seconds to introduce uh, Campanaio. So it's a it's a 50% cab, 50% melo, almost the same quantity produced uh, as uh, La Pineta, and uh, it's also 100% uh, fermented in French oak. Uh, but uh, the particular thing in Campanaio is that we do uh, a very rigorous uh, uh, green harvest in order to select uh, at the end of the season only one cloister per vine. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, we do again in the cellar before to start the fermentation, the berry selection. And then we ferment in uh, French oak and then one more year in 70% uh, new, 30% uh, uh, second time uh, French oak barrel uh, in, uh, in, in the cellar and then uh, a few months uh, in bottle uh, before uh, before to release also 2018 is the vintage uh, available right now in the market and i think you are ready to receive uh, uh, on uh, in in united states are ready for sale so it's uh, once again uh, thanks for your attention i'm uh, uh, respecting the time is 25 minutes now i am available for you for, uh, for your question. And uh, once again, thanks again from my heart, from Castellare, for all of us also in, in behalf of Mr. Panerai, he, he prayed me to say to all of you, uh, special thanks for the fantastic job you are continuous to do with, uh, with Castellare, because Castellare cannot be without Weinbo, and I think Weinbo cannot be without Castellare. Yeah. Well, Alessandro, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you for being uh, on the schedule, to be on time in the schedule. So we did uh, receive a few questions. So even if you um, answer uh, some of them, I will say uh, kind of in a, uh, in a general way. Um, the first question was, uh, what were the growing uh, conditions in 2018? You mentioned just uh, uh, now that uh, in Monastero, for example, 2018, uh, was the one of the best vintage uh, that you think you did. So can you go a little bit more specific? Uh, what was about 2018 that really made this wine special? Uh, allora, first of all, uh, first of all, 2018, uh, as you uh, probably know, uh, we had uh, uh, from uh, the beginning of spring uh, till the beginning of summer, we had a lot of rain. So with the, with the with a high reduction of temperatures uh, comparing with uh, the average. And, uh, but uh, from uh, beginning of summer to the end of fall, we had a fantastic season. So uh, for this reason, it's so special because we had uh, a season a little bit longer than normal. Okay, so because it's something like we, we lose part of the season at the beginning, but uh, we, we did uh, a little bit longer at the end. So that is make a beautiful, beautiful help, especially in the phenolic, uh, in the phenolic maturation, especially in the balance between, uh, uh, between uh, tannins and, uh, and polyphenol in general. So for this reason, uh, 2018 was one of the latest harvest we did. So it's, uh, for example, we, we did the harvest of um, uh, Sangiovese in the third week of October. Uh, we did the harvest of Pinot Nero in uh, the second week of October. Normally we do in uh, the second or the third of September. So at least uh, two weeks later. So for this reason, 2018 was uh, really special. Okay, on the same, um, uh, on the same argument, uh, same um, uh, discussion, we had a question uh, asking if you can tell us what were the main difference between uh, 2017 and 2018 vintage? What like few uh, main difference between those two vintage reflecting the wines? Uh, 2017 uh, was, uh, first of all, uh, the main difference was the quantity, the quantity produced. 2017 was the lowest uh, uh, of my career uh, because the season was very dry uh, and for this reason, uh, uh, the weight of the bunches of the cloisters was uh, really low. So, and then uh, for the same cloisters, just to give you an idea, 
the cloister of San Giovese in the average is uh, the weight is about uh, uh, 250 grams. In 2017, it was 150, so 100 grams less. So it's about 40% uh, lower than uh, for the same size of cloister. So just to give you the idea. So that is the main difference. And the second difference is that uh, in 2017, uh, following uh, all, all the season, uh, was a, a vintage with uh, a big power. Okay, and uh, 2018 was, uh, for my personal opinion, uh, uh, more balanced, more balanced. And, uh, and also, if we have to compare uh, in terms of uh, agility, probably uh, the 2017 has uh, a little bit, uh, uh, little bit uh, longer. So, because at the moment, uh, the structure, the tannins is still a very, very important. 2018 is more drinkable right now. It's more fresh, more approachable. And uh, that is the main, the main differences between uh, 2017 and 2018. But both uh, really, really good vintages for different reasons. Thank you. Uh, another question that uh, we had uh, earlier, probably you, uh, you say something about uh, Podere Monastero, but probably if you can talk about both uh, Castellare uh, and the Podere Monastero is uh, what kind of um, green farming uh, in, in these two wineries uh, you guys are producing? Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, in uh, Castellare is organic, 100%, or, or biological, if you prefer to use a, a European uh, description. But we are not certified. Uh, uh, we, because, so now we are thinking to move inside of uh, the certification, but uh, uh, since the beginning till now, we decided that, uh, so we practice organic, so 100%, but uh, considering that uh, uh, we are producing uh, beautiful wines, uh, respecting uh, the environment, so we not considered uh, in a good philosophy also to pay a huge amount of money to get the certification. And in case uh, of some uh, of markets uh, required to certify that all the wines are organic, we have uh, an agreement with the laboratory of analysis in, uh, in Siena that he can provide uh, all the analysis uh, that are zero a residual of uh, uh, herbicide, the pesticide, uh, uh, any uh, molecules, uh, chemical molecules. So it's 100% natural. So we we prefer to to prove that uh, we are 100% uh, organic. Then you can that com comparing to pay a huge amount of money to get the certification that uh, doesn't make a difference for us. Thanks. Okay. okay. Well, another question, probably, um, since uh, I think it's important, since we have uh, several new people uh, with, in the company um, for the last couple of years, if you can uh, um, just briefly uh, tell us the full story about the birds on the labels yeah. of the company, just quick. Sorry, sorry if I, I didn't uh, stop a lot to talk uh, about the birds and the label because uh, uh, in, in my mind, it was wine boys. Uh, it, Everybody knows about the story, but it's true that there are some new people, and, and also I have to respect the the time you you gave you kindly gave me. So the birds and the label is a very important story because uh, again uh, connected with uh, the idea of our uh, organic uh, organic uh, uh, production. Uh, the birds symbolize uh, the total respect uh, for the environment, and uh, every vintage we use a different bird and all birds in danger in the Chianti Classico area. And uh, the, the, the idea, the, the, the philosophy was uh, identified by Mr. Panerai as uh, the greatest uh, symbol of uh, uh, protecting, the, protecting the environment. That was uh, the idea why since the beginning Castellare uh, used the, the, the birds in the label. The only the only wine that is not changing the, the birds every vintage is the Poggio e Merli, because Merlot is a black bird and uh, so it's 
phonetically reason is we prefer to use the same blackbird uh, because it's Merlot, no? Merlot, Merlot. Okay, the last question is actually a question that uh, I would personally like to ask you. If uh, you are uh, blind tasting the wines from Castellari or the wine from Imonaster, what is something that you, uh, you can tell us that uh, right away, something in the nose or in the part of your wine, that you know that those are wines that they come from, you know, Castellare or Monster. Which can you tell me a characteristic that you know exactly that? Uh, so you can share with us uh, about you know the very uh, specific style of those uh, two wine, two wines. Uh, before to answer this uh, specific question, uh, I have to tell to uh, everybody that, uh, as you probably many of you already knows that uh, I, I am a. a a, a little son of uh, Giacomo Takis, you know. So I had the opportunity and uh, the pleasure, the honor to spend uh, almost 20 years with uh, the best Italian winemaker ever. And uh, for this reason, always uh, since, uh, the, since our beginning, uh, he always said, in, in, a, in a best wine, you must recognize the three different things. So the, the first thing is the territory. So you must recognize where the wine is made. The second thing, you must recognize the grape, the grape you decided to use to make this wine. And the third one, you must recognize the soul of winemaker. So that is uh, always my mission. No? So to try in each wine to, to try to to do a, a perfect research of these three things. Because uh, for my personal opinion, uh, so the Chianti Classico as example. So when, when you taste the Chianti Classico, you must recognize that the wine is made from uh, Chianti Classico area. Otherwise, and, and unfortunately, there are uh, several Chianti Classicos that uh, if you try, if, as you said, if you, if you taste blind, you difficult with a very good high difficulties you can recognize that the wine is made in Chianti Classico no? and that is the first thing so to try every every vintage to find a way to to get the character from the grapes in order to bring into the glass uh, the notes uh, of all the the beautiful smell you can you can have when you walk in the middle of the vineyard in the Chianti Classico that is my first mission and the second, uh, trying to respect the grapes. So trying to bring from each grape uh, the best characteristic in terms of elegance, in terms of uh, balance between power and, uh, and, and, uh, and freshness. That is, and, and also the, finally, finally, the, uh, my, my idea of winemaking is to try to respect the balance because uh, Honestly, today it's uh, almost easy to make uh, a full body wines, no? With all the connoisseurs we have, all the uh, technologies we have, it's almost easy to make a uh, full body wine. But the most difficult thing is to make uh, a full body wines with uh, a beautiful finesse, a beautiful elegance. So to, to, to find a good compromise, uh, a, a fantastic balance in the wine, that is, uh, I think in all of my wine, and now I can I try to answer to you, you can find all the things. So in all of, in all of my wines, uh, you can find uh, respect for the grapes, respect for the territory, and uh, respect for, in one word, elegance. Alessandro, well, thank you so much. Uh, it was a, a great presentation. Uh, thank you for um, your time. Uh, today, this afternoon, uh, to be with us. I want to thank you all the uh, participants. Uh, we had, uh, you know, 13, 14, 15 people attending for the seminar um, for this um, uh, presentation. Thank you so much, uh, and thank you for answering all the questions. Thank you again. Grazie. Abraccio. Thank you again. You know that wine boy is always in my heart. Always, always. Grazie to everyone. Grazie mille. A big kiss to all of you. Uh